So this is a complex case. There were a number of issues, including ventilation that wasn't working, a PIV, which is reducing the heat in the property, maybe taking out some vapor, but it's not working in conjunction with the bathroom extractor fan, which it should be. So it's not really relevant. And we got brown staining on a party wall at the rear of the property and I wasn't able to see inside the neighbor's side. Have a listen to the survey now. I'll, I'll discuss it at the end. Oh, here. Uh, it's a PIV. Oh, not a big fan. Um, it's not dealing with the root cause. Ironically, that's dry. But that's uh, oh, maybe because you have mold treatment there. Yeah, it's a bit of that has kind of always been that. Check that. Can you when you've got multiple issues that are actually remarkably similar mm. in a property that's been divided up in a very odd way. It may well be that it's condensation forming, but this isn't an outside wall, which is why it's weird. But it may be that it's an internal but common area that's unheated and therefore cold. Uh, likewise, the the vapor, the, the extractor fan in the bathroom doesn't appear to be going out. Um, and obviously it should be. And I think it's condensation for me in that internal wall. So if I go over here. This, because this is all cold. This is a um, common area in behind here. Going to the stairs up. Uh, and the vapor isn't being blown out. So it's going into the ceiling void inside here. It's my best guess. In this case, you've got mainly calcium sulfate salts. These are salts that come from the plaster itself. The old name for calcium sulfate is gypsum, and you can see them blistering. You've got very light shades, which suggest some movement of water through the building material, which could possibly come from a leak on the neighbor's side. So if they had a bathroom on that side, what you want to do is look for grout uh, gaps in the grout or um, around baths, you know, the gap around a bath, that, that type of thing. Uh, those are the typical things that cause it. I happen to notice on your neighbour but upstairs that there's a lot of condensation there. So that can cause similar okay. issues as well. Um, so if you can send, if you can do a photo of that, otherwise um, I can arrange to come back yeah. Uh, in January. Okay. Yeah. But ideally, if you can get it. Um, yeah. The other thing. I've just unscrewed it, taking it out, and there's no ducting at all. And the extractor fan is just going into the void and condensing in there. Or, or possibly just coming back out again. It's not going to the outside. That's the point. So there is a hole there that it could partially be blown through. It's very odd. Oh, there is a hole. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. There's a hole there. It should have a tube so that the air is forced down the tube. The best thing to do is open this up, uh, have a connected ducting to this, and then depending on what you find in here, you have ducting all the way across here, and then you have to continue it. it, it I, I can imagine it comes out here, but I don't know. Uh, I'll knock it and see what, whether it makes a sound. So this is a 12 so do you version, I would go for a 20 litre version. So, 
sounds hollow there, and I think that's just the plaster that's blown from off the wall. Oh, okay. Uh, possibly because of dampness. So it, was, it wasn't like this when you bought though, was it? No, and it wasn't like this until really this year. But, okay, which wouldn't be caused by the bathroom because that's been there ever since. So it might suggest some form of leakage from, yeah. from next door. Uh, probably on the lower ground floor on the same level as you are, but it could be the floor above. I'll go and, and knock on the door upstairs in a sec. Okay. Two things to say. One is that it is a, it's a decorative spoiling, as they call it. Yeah. Um, but it's not going to cause any danger, harm. Yes. What does is, is mould and dust mites, and you've got mould to the front room. So you know you've got a, a vapour issue in this property. Um, but the damp itself is not causing any damage. You know, we, we rely on damp. It's, it's the, the bugs and, and you know, mould and, and uh, rot that grows in damp that's the problem, not the damp itself. It's yeah. just decorative spoiling. Second thing is that the, these are calcium sulfate salts that are crystallising in there, and they're crystallising because they're coming out of the building material. They're part of the mortar, the plaster, the um building material and they will pucker the the wall a bit and you will get this this slightly coming away but you can normally gently sand it down and you can normally paint it and not even notice or fill it a bit um or worst case scenario you'll have to get a finishing plaster but it's a very sh small job for a plaster you know it's like yeah some paying somebody a small amount of money after work and they'll come and do it but you know it's not it's like a 20 minute job if that for a plasterer uh, okay. and then it needs painting but I doubt you'll get to that point I think you just sand it down a little bit of filler and, and you'll be fine Brilliant. easy fill easy fill I think is a, is a good brand okay. this is looking through a thermal imaging yeah, so camera the corner you get a lot of heat loss there. Uh, you're moving the piano out a bit with marginally help. Uh, you get a lot of heat loss from these things as well. Feel the cold air coming through. So it's basically pumping in cold air and you're heating it up and it's coming up averagely rather than targeted is why I don't recommend them. PIV fans are not an alternative to bathroom ventilation and kitchen ventilation. They're for background ventilation and if you've got good ventilation and dehumidification then you don't need these fans. Okay. Um, yeah, so. You were saying about your brother last yeah, year. Yeah, I, I was just saying the only reason I looked up specifically one that wasn't a damp company is because he had a free survey in which they said, oh, we need to inject stuff in the walls and paid about five grand, I think, and didn't help at all, really. Yeah. It actually makes it worse, Yeah, ironically, because it reduces the vapour permeability of the wall, so it doesn't buffer. Yeah. Uh, so you can see the heat loss there. Uh, and in this area, this is by the outside wall and the internal corridor, and then the bathroom to to the left. Zone of heat loss there. Yeah. So just to explain uh, the downsides of PIV, you get a lot of heat loss from uh, the the air. The air from the outside is being blown in, uh, and if it's raining, it will contain lots of vapor. If it's cold, it won't contain as much vapour, but it will be very cold and you'll be reheating all the air. You'll only re remove averagely uh, humid air from the property. Much better to use targeted dehumidification, sorry, targeted extractor fan and dehumidification to bring down the dew point to below the outside temperature and then you'll be fine, no problems. Mold only grows where relative humidity goes above 85% uh, and you're getting vapour into the corner. It, despite the PIV, you're getting mold in, in that area. So if you follow my recommendations, it'll be fine. You can do things like 
just remove the piano a little bit from the side to increase the airflow. Uh, so just to say that I still need to understand what's happening on the other side of the kitchen wall. Um, if the bathroom extractor fan is working properly, then I think you'll remove a majority of the dampness from the property. Uh, but do use a, a dehumidifier and keep it running 24 seven and do measure the dew point. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll need to know more about the neighbor side. Thanks. Bye. And do do leave a comment and uh, subscribe.